Welcome to the sixth episode of Working and Living in Finland. Here we are today to find out in the sixth week with this series of how and where to find the skills that is very well regarding to the jobs. On the other hand, we'll get to learn about Finnish vocational education training. And at last, we'll get to chat with a newcomer from Ukraine who could find a job in Kopio city in Finland after four months of arrival. But at this point, let's get to know the country a little bit together as it is the culture of every episode. We Finns are pretty happy people, even though we may not smile all the time. The things that make us happy are often very down to earth. Allow us to show you what we mean. We think running in a pool with a belt and walking with sticks are pretty cool ways to exercise. When it comes to food, there is nothing more down to earth than a boiled potato. We eat a lot of them. Like this. We find luxury in relaxing at a cozy waterside cottage surrounded by forest. Our favorite sweets don't come in so many colors. They're just black and they're not even that sweet. In fact, they're salty. And for us, sitting in a simple heated room is the perfect way to spend time together. But there's more to happiness than eating boiled potatoes and black candy. Our happiness is the sum of many ordinary things, things that are actually quite extraordinary. We get a head start on happiness even before we're born. All parents-to-be get a baby box full of important stuff for their new family. Maternity and child health clinics, part of the public healthcare system, keep us on a track for a happy, healthy life. We're happy that it's safe to send our kids off to school on their own. We trust each other. And we can trust our institutions too. We're known for our high quality education system. We're happy that education is free all the way through university. Happiness can also be found among the bookshelves. Our many public libraries are popular meeting places offering not only books, but all kinds of cool services. We love playing games, but we're even happier when we get to invent them. It's the extraordinarily ordinary things that make Finland so happy. And when we smile, <laughs> we make it count. Welcome back. Here I am with Paulina from Finnish, one of the Finnish um, educational training college in, in Finland, in actually North Savo, to discuss about this topic of where and how to find the skills. Welcome, Paulina. Thank you very much, Roham. Good to be here. Indeed, um, good to ha good to see you here, and hopefully today we can um, discuss some some about about this issue that many of the audience might not know about, or some of them might know, but don't know how to get the help. But before further ado, would you let us know what is a, a vocational college? Yes, vocational college is uh, a place or school system where you can train your skills mm -hmm. in a broad range of skills for different kind of professionals. Uh, so uh, it needs like a, uh, skills to use your hands, maybe skills to use your body. Mm -hmm. So uh, it differs the ab about the, pro the, the professional, mm -hmm. how to use. But anyhow, um, it needs, of course, some educational thinking mm -hmm. and, and know-how, but also how to, how to make things, how to cook, how to make a, be a hairdresser, how mm -hmm. to um, serve uh, like uh, older people mm -hmm. in, in elderly houses or, or how to help in farm, for example. There so are ma many opportunities. So there is a wide uh, variety of subjects that people can go and get the learnings, uh, I mean like get the skills. Is exactly. that correct? Exactly. Okay, so um, if a person wants to be, as you said, a, a a cook or a welder, they can come to vocational 
colleges. And how long, for example, each of these uh, trainings would take time to be completed? Usually it takes around three years. Mm -hmm. Maybe sooner, maybe longer. Exactly, okay. yes. Mm -hmm. There are like personalized paths to, to study. Mm -hmm. And since um, we are using many different uh, learning environments in, in the vocational education, so part of the education is given in the schools, mm -hmm. uh, part in net, Mm -hmm. and path in the working place, in the companies. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, depending on your skills to study and, and use uh, the, the net uh, environment for proceeding in, in your studies, so, so you may be much quicker mm -hmm. or then you may take it may take more time and, and you may need some more personalized or face-to-face or uh, teaching mm -hmm. and group work, for example, to to somehow achieve the know-how that is needed for your profession. I understand. Thank you for explaining it. Um, to to make it a little bit to, to wrap it up this uh, part, you just mentioned that it all depends on the person. But one of the most important thing I heard from what you were saying was that some of the education will take place in the companies. So does it mean that um, um, they, do they, has it ever happened? Let's go to the question like this. Has it ever happened that uh, someone got a, got a job because that they have been in that company and they made networks uh, regarding of what they, they have learned and they did? Many times, many times. Uh, since the, the uh, employees, of course, when they, they get to know you, mm -hmm. they get to know your skills, and and uh, during your studies, you already have had your so let's say uh, le foot on your on on between the doors or how how can you say it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a Finnish way of saying, but but you are al almost inside the company. You know the culture of the company. You know mm -hmm. the tasks already, mm -hmm. and and uh, so it, it in many cases that's the way how you get your first job I or you see. get your summer jobs. You may even work while you are studying. They mm -hmm. may even give you a uh, salary okay. uh, while you are studying. Th there are some, some opportunities also in, in that sense. That's very good to know. Thank you. And thank you for teaching us one Finnish phrase, f f having your food in the middle of the door. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Is that so? so okay. How to say it in Finnish? Jalka oven välissä. Okay. Okay, so <laughs> um, we, uh, before we go through the, the deep to the discussions, we have prepared one video that explains about VET, which is vocational education training. And then let's uh, watch it together with the audience. Let's go watch the video together and then we will be back with Paulina again. In Finland, we believe that a path to a good life is paved with education. Everyone has an equal opportunity to study what they want and go as far as they wish to. We leave nobody behind. Vocational education and training is an integral part of our education system. It promotes employment, innovations and sustainable growth. It gives people fulfilling, interesting careers, also for those with special needs. In Finland, everyone is guaranteed free upper secondary education. VET is a popular choice and highly rated. This is so because VET takes into account both students and the employment sector and meets the needs of both of them. The wide range of qualifications evolves with the changing demands of society, business and industry. Vocational qualifications also provide eligibility for higher education studies. We are strong believers in lifelong learning. That's why vocational education and training provides flexible opportunities to combine studying with work. It also gives students a lot of support in mapping out their path. A path to becoming highly competent, happy individuals.
We're back again with Paulina. So, Paulina, we have learned about the VET from you and from the video that we have watched, but something that is very important, the language of this. Um, I have heard it is mostly in Finnish. Is it true or is it a rumor? It's, <laughs> it's absolutely true. <laughs> okay. So, most, most of the vocational studies are given in Finnish. Mm -hmm. And to be able to apply or to get the position as a student in, in the vocational schools or colleges, you need to uh, prove your English or oh, your, your Finnish skills. Okay, I was happy for a second to <laughs> said English, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> so. There are also some courses mm -hmm. that, that's possible to, to uh, have in English. Have in English. Okay. But that's the minority. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what is the proficiency that is needed? Is it like you, you need to have the fluent in you have to be fluent in Finnish, or is there a level that you okay? The levels uh, they they differs according to your professional, mm -hmm. your, what you are willing to go, and they are changing. Also, like like uh, in in uh, Savo uh, vocational college, we have areas where the. Uh, employment where, where the employers are needed to work for so much mm -hmm. that that they are pushing like pressure also to schools to educate people who has l less in uh, Finnish Thank knowledge you. or okay. skills than than normally are so okay. we have like so-called uh, pre courses uh, okay. to people that that uh, so so that there are like this professional training mm. and also heavy support in Finnish uh, I skills yes I see very good thank you um, so mostly in Finnish but um, I have to say it also uh, to our audience about this that if you remember in episode five in last week we have gone through the steps of how to integrate uh, one of those was that you could get to get the Finnish courses so you get to learn the Finnish courses, and after that, you have the option to go to um, these vocational colleges to learn a skill, or go to university, or just find a job based on your background. But Paulina, the one thing that is very important, despite the language, is that how can people, uh, both from outside of Finland and inside of Finland, find these vocational institutions or colleges? And then if they found, uh, what should they do? Because even you know, and I know, that most of the information might be also in Finnish language. Of course, with a, with a right click, we can use the um, translation, or in Finnish, like in kärne, you know? Kärne. Kärne. Mm -hmm. and, and then we see the English. But would you explain to us the, the, the manner of how it goes? Mm. Uh, yes, uh, unfortunately, most of the information is also in Finnish. Mm -hmm. But uh, in 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 my note or knowledge, in in most cases there are also the content is uh, briefly expressed in English, mm -hmm. and there are like some addresses or phone numbers to whom contact, okay. and it's enough if you send a text message or send an email and ask for help how to apply. Okay. There are like specific forms that you should fill, but they may be the forms may be a little bit tricky okay. if, if you don't know the system, but, but the in any cases, there are personal help mm -hmm. you can have. So just a simple email could also um, send a person two or three steps in front. Exactly. Perfect. Thank you so much for today and joining us. It was a pleasure to hear from you and we learned a lot from you. Um, do you have any last words or message that you have to give to our audience? Uh, my message is that the uh, Finland education system is good. It has very good reputation. We need people highly educated uh, and, and also people that are interested in working with their hands. Mm -hmm. and, and yes, please come. Thank you, Paulina, once again. What I want to also mention to our audience is that what Paulina meant is that uh, either you are inside of Finland or outside of Finland, either you are highly educated or not even educated, you will have the chance to get the uh, trainings, either from educational, vocational education uh, trainings in the colleges or from highly educational universities. Um, you will have the chances and you can get the help 
in last episode we talked about it in this episode we went through the skills next episode we will go through um, how to get the jobs where to find them and so forth but before anything now we are going to talk with Lisa who came from Ukraine about four or five months ago after the war and um, she could find a job after so short time but she had so many challenges and we'll get to hear her story and then we'll find out how she overcame them let's get to talk to her now welcome here I am with Lisa who moved to Finland from Ukraine after the war five months ago hello Lisa welcome hello. thank you it's nice to have you here um, let's go to the to the five months ago when you arrived to Finland would you tell us what happened and where did you move to Finland first uh, yes I moved to Finland uh, that you told f five months ago okay. uh, the reason that is the war start in Ukraine uh, and actually I am here yeah. <laughs> yes and uh, first time first time I lived in Mikkeli it's a small city mm -hmm. and first time uh, I little relax about situation but when I was okay I start to looking a job. Uh -huh. So, yes. so uh, first of all, sorry for the fact that um, what the for the reasons that mm. you were forced to leave your own country and Thank wishing you. you all the best and all the Ukrainians, of course. But um, on the other hand, you came to Finland, uh, you moved to Mikkeli, and then after you were a little bit relaxed, you right away wanted to find a job. Uh, yes, yes. When you know when it's uh, basic things is okay, like mm -hmm. uh, flat. You know where you live, what mm -hmm. you will be eat tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You uh, you think for future. Uh -huh. And then you thought that the first thing is to find a job. Yes. So um, how did you find a job? Was it easy for because you just arrived? So and 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 I know that you found a job eventually, but let me know. The the pr let everyone know, of course, that how was the procedure, how was the process that you found mm. the job? Yes, be honest, it's not easy. Yeah, <laughs> it's not easy, <laughs> but I'm, it's I'm possible. I'm surprised now, so when <laughs> of course, yeah. <laughs> so how was yes. it that you did it, even though it wasn't easy, you did it so fast? Yeah. Let us know how was the uh, process. Actually, for me, uh, help one Finnish man. He's uh, retired now mm -hmm. uh, his name is Yari he very often coming to our social center and mm -hmm. he really want to help for everybody he, mm -hmm. he those who come there as a refugee and need the help yes, this person yes helps for them. everyone mm -hmm. who everyone okay. who will ask for for him and of course I took this chance I see yes. so so um, um, he helped you to find a job Yes, what he, did he do? He do everything with me. He not uh, only take some information. Uh -huh. He do everything with me. So, w what is that everything? Like, for example, uh, uh, first yes, uh, first uh, he found name of recruiting center, uh -huh. uh, private recruiting center, and after he contact with them, speaking with them because uh, some of them didn't know English and I really? little bit yeah okay uh, and I little bit speak English not very well but uh, I can com community mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it was it was the problem <laughs> of course yeah so you you didn't know anything and then he called to to help you to find a job yes, uh, yes. and mm -hmm. uh, you finally got a job as a waitress. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I uh, make two interview first mm -hmm. of recruiting company after they recommend me to my boss. Mm -hmm. After I make one more uh, more interview mm -hmm. and I got a job. <laughs> I find you finally got a job after some months. Um, something that I want to uh, talk about is that many other Ukrainians do not have this opportunity. There, mm -hmm. there is no yari for them, you know, yeah, to call yeah. the <laughs> recruitment centers and so forth. How can they find a job like uh, now mm. i think you have a little bit of experience after these five months would you um tell us or tell your fellow ukrainians how can they find a job mm -hmm. in finland 
uh, I think first thing they uh, that they must do it's uh, go to go to TE office. TE office. TE office. Uh -huh. Yes, and uh, make registration. It will be mm -hmm. best. So you they just register and people there would help them to, for example, find the jobs or yeah, everything. They mm -hmm. will be tell some programs because I didn't make uh, registration because uh, I didn't know <laughs> about the Ito and Misto. Yeah. Know? So so. Uh, just just uh, to make it clear yeah. for the audience as well is that um, you can uh, call the recruiting sis, uh, centers but if you are not um, familiar with how it goes or if they don't speak Finnish mm -hmm. one thing that you can do is to go to the Te Toimistu office near you you can just search Te mm -hmm. services and then you can get help and they would really call for you and take care yes. of you for that. Yeah, um, right, uh, right. But what other options would there be, e uh, you know, despite uh, to mm -hmm. uh For example, I heard that you are now going in, uh, in Copio in Compassi. Yes, yes. It's like a study center. And mm -hmm. I think uh, in every city you have something like Compassi. Maybe it exactly. will be another name, but... Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It it's very good because it's a uh, physical office and you can go and they are r uh, really nice person workers yeah. and they can uh, they can take uh, care of you tell more information about Finland how it's work sometimes even maybe call and you know make these connections so that you could find jobs or something like that something same as Yari might did yes. um, of course this compassy that we are talking about it is in Kopio I don't know if there is another branch in any other um, cities, but we have quite many uh, projects for internationals, like international houses, uh, for example, international house in Helsinki or Tampere, the talent hubs, and so forth. Uh, so, speaking of that, I just heard that you are also looking for new opportunities, and you recently got an opportunity from Teatoi Misto, that you can go to a yeah. training, and after that, right away, you would start a job, like five months of training, and then you yes, can uh, start the yes, job. Yes, yes. So, uh, even for other Ukrainians, this could be yes, something. Yes. Um, but Lisa, what was the most challenging <laughs> and difficult thing for you when oh. you arrived? For me, uh, the most uh, hard was, of course, language. Language, mm -hmm. it's uh, not it easy. It is uh, still hard, I guess. Yes, yeah, yes, <laughs> of course. yes. And uh, that's fact that everything in Finland is online. You it know? is. Yeah, everything yeah. work online. When I uh, wanted to open t tax uh, tax. Uh, tax uh, number mm -hmm. I couldn't because it's online the, the tax number the tax, tax number. office yeah, yeah, yeah. Tax yeah, everything number. Yes, even when I wanted number. to move to Finland I could rent my house mm. from my own country and just come here and pick the keys everything oh. is but in my country you <laughs> cannot rent the house online you have to be in person, person. you know you have Physically. to go to the store yeah. yeah so yeah you're right everything is online so yes. was it hard for you uh, yes, because if you know the system, of course, it's easy. But mm -hmm. if you don't know the system and you uh, make some mistakes, you don't know how it's uh, connect with uh, with the person. Mm -hmm. You write letter, you wait after more letter, and mm -hmm. it's take a lot of time. Yep, there is this website that I found. Of course, we would put the link for our audience in our um, LinkedIn and Instagram, of course, after this episode. But this is called, um, I think it was Info, Info Finland. Mm -hmm dot fee mm -hmm. you know so every information in different languages no. was written there uh, th that helped me a lot in the beginning mm -hmm. so because i agree everything is online and might be confusing uh so at this point right now yes. uh, do you feel confused when dealing with online finland uh, finnish <laughs> online ness you know a uh, little bit yes so you're still learning uh, yes yeah. yes yes and what are you doing with the language with the language now, I uh, activity learn, try to learn Finnish language. Oh, you're learning it now. Yes, I yes, see. I'm and focused to learn. Okay, th that's yes. nice to hear. Nice to uh, stay yes. focused. <laughs> it is hard, but don't give up. Um, so, Lisa, if if you want to give an advice to advice. those newcomers, mm -hmm. yes, yes, uh, what would you give? What do you tell them? Yeah. I want to say that Finnish uh, people are very good. Mm -hmm. They are very uh, opening for you. Mm -hmm. Of course, if you will be asking, because uh, only you know what you need. Exactly. And uh, they couldn't uh, read your mind. 
Of course. So yes. you have to go and ask for help yes. and they would help. Yes, for and sure. they yeah. really will be help because I live in family for three, for five months, you I know. I see, yeah. So they're helping. Yes, they very mm. help. Finnish people very good and nice and they really understand the situation. I see. What it happened I in I Ukraine. I agree. And um, I want to ask you this now that you borrowed it up. Um, mm -hmm. What do you? What did you find very nice mm -hmm. from Finnish culture so far that you are in here? Mm. Uh, here I feel very freedom. You know, mm -hmm. very freedom. S so you can uh, choose style clothes, what you would like, and anybody say. Mm, no, no see. one says that in, yes, in, in here. Yes, yeah, like yeah. something strange. So mm -hmm. you can. Uh, have your style private or make your style private. Uh, of course, it's an example. So you mean that uh, in everything, like in you everything. have you have say uh, you have faced the freedom in here. Yeah. But as an example, like for example, the style. In other things, also you have seen it uh, because I, when we were talking also before, you mentioned that you have been in different countries and yeah, seen yeah, different yeah. cultures. <laughs> yes, uh, yes. So so uh, what else uh, example uh, you can say, for example? Yes. Uh, you can freedom for everything, for religion, from mm -hmm. politics, uh, and do what you would like. Indeed, that's yes. very that's very important, and and it's valuable when people do not bring fingers in your private life, and yes. they, you know, everyone mind their own business, and then they are also helpful. Thank you, Lisa, for today, and thank you for staying with us. This episode is also over. I'm sure you might have questions from Lisa. And she will join us in our LinkedIn Live question and answer later on. See you next week. Have a great evening.